Welcome to our second uh, webinar. Um, this time, a webinar which will deal with the situation of community power, community power in times of crisis, and why now community power is even more um, important than before. Um, I'm very glad that we have a very great panel of speakers from around the world uh, who are joining us and um, yeah we've this is now the second uh, webinar in a series in our new series of webinars the last one was held two weeks ago we're giving a general market overview um, of wind power around the world and as I mentioned this time today we deal with the situation of community power which can be beyond wind energy of course so um well you see me what we're still of course trying to to um find out how technology works and uh, with the virtual background is sometimes a little bit uh, um overlapping with my with my shirt so don't get uh, um, irritated because of that um i would now start with uh, giving you an introduction of um yeah, what we as World Wind Energy Association are doing. Um, just trying to share my um, laptop with you. Just, there we are. Share. So, and then just a moment before we start. Um, let me also explain that um, if you have any questions to our speakers, uh, you are invited to type your questions in the chat. Um, so we can then um, try to have some time after each speaker that we can answer the, the questions that you're typing here. Um, I would also like to um, mention that this webinar will be recorded. So um, we We'll make uh, the, the recordings available on our website. Uh, will actually be um, uh, by YouTube, but when you um, access our website and uh, where you found or still find the, the program of the webinar, um, you will be able there to later, I expect that that will happen early next week, you can watch the recordings again. So, the topic of this uh, webinar here is community power in times of crisis. And we have people from around the world, speakers from around the world who will present their views. Let me underline that this webinar is focusing on the industrialized countries. Uh, we will have another webinar focusing on the developing world, which will take place on the 24th of June. But as the conditions for community power in particular are so different, uh, depending on which, which part of the world you are, uh, we thought it's better to look at that uh, um, in two different events. Um, let me briefly explain you World Wind Energy Association. We are based, I'm at this point of time in our office in Bonn, close to the UN campus. You see the map here, the UN Climate Secretary, which is empty at the moment, by the way, because um, UN Climate Secretary instructed all their staff to work from home. They all do home office. Um, as World Wind Energy Association, of course, we have our board members all over the world on all continents. So it's just the small head office based here in Bonn. We have in total 600, around more than 600 direct members in more than 100 countries. And what we actually, what we've been doing usually is organizing conferences, um, physical conferences, offline conferences. And we've had 18 World Wind Energy conferences so far. This year will be the first World Wind Energy conference um, that the first year without a World Wind Energy Conference because it uh, will not be possible to have one. Um, I also come back to that uh, in a moment that we've also started to organize World Community Power Conferences together with uh, our partners from other parts of the world. So the uh, map of the world you can see here uh, where you see the um, dark blue countries is the countries where we do have members. Of course, most of them are very active in particular in wind power, but many also in other technologies. Let me come uh, to the main topic here. And we want to know um, 
what is the role of community power and why is community power so important? And we want, I think, to highlight in particular today, why is it now even more important than before this special situation? Um, at first, let me underline um, community power means local ownership and kind of what it brings is it multiplies the benefits of renewable energy. It usually increases local wealth. We will hear many examples, I'm sure. Um, this is not only about um, acceptance. Many people speak about we need in particular for wind farms acceptance. No, it is not about acceptance primarily. Um, it goes hand in hand with acceptance because the citizens, local citizens, they are the drivers of a project. We don't need to persuade them because they want to have a wind farm or whatever uh, close to where they live. Um, this is also about democratic structures. So it's strengthening local structures, decision-making structures. So what we see is there's a the opposite of a vicious circle. A positive circle uh, is usually growing when you have local ownership, local renewable energy projects. So uh, local ownership leads to, of course, more acceptance, support, new initiatives. Uh, the economy is improving, new developments take place, which of course then strengthen the local uh, structures. And again, then leads to more local ownership and local activities. Um, we as World and Energy Association, we discussed many years ago, actually it's about a decade ago, um, whether we shouldn't kind of be clear about what we mean with community power. And uh, at that time, there were people from all over the world, from developing countries, industrialized countries. And we've come up uh, with uh, three different criteria which define community power. And you can see them here. Actually, it's quite simple. It's kind of a triangle. Um, the shares, who is actually the shareholder in a project, the voting rights, so who has the right to take decisions in a project, and then the third part is who gets the profit, who gets the benefits out of a project. And there are some countries where for certain reasons, not all these three are fulfilled, but we said if uh, two out of these three criteria majority is with the local community, then that's what we call community power. I think that's important to start uh, like this. And of course, there are other definitions uh, which are often in a, in a regional local context, which I, as I see, always include these three elements, which are on a very global general level. Now, um, let me uh, present you this. Um, I think this is relevant also in particular when we talk about times of crisis, how to overcome crisis. This slide was actually made for community power in developing countries. It's about productive use of energy and energy access. What you see here, of course, on the right side is that energy access leads to more, again, economic activities, new enterprises, new jobs, new income. That means there's less poverty and then there is reinvestment um, of that profit that can be generated locally, which can again be invested in energy supply in more energy supply, this is a kind of, again, this positive circle. So what's the difference between a, a locally owned and an um, um, installation that is owned by someone who is not living in the community? So of course that if the profit stays in the community as, as well, then a larger share will be reinvested. That, that means that this whole process can get even a greater momentum. Nothing. This is important when we, at the moment in particular, consider that now all the international supply chains are even on risk. We heard two weeks ago that even China has no problems to relaunch its wind industry because they're getting certain spare parts from abroad. So when we see that the local economies will play a bigger role in the recovery of the economies just because of that situation in which we are, because international transportation is not at as easy as it used to be, you can see that this even gets stronger importance than before. So let summarize community power is about maximizing socioeconomic benefits and uh, that means it is a key for effective and sustainable economic recovery. Um, let's uh, also keep in mind in this context that of course uh, 
renewables, and that's one the one pillar, of course, next to the community ownership, um, is climate friendly, and that's the the second big crisis. Actually, the title of this webinar should be with E. It's two crises which we are facing at the moment. But of course, what we need, and now even more, when we talk about what the governments are going to do in the next uh, couple of weeks, months, is we need to have favorable policies, frameworks that allow local communities to become active and to invest. And we will hear, uh, I'm sure, a lot from our speakers later. Um, let me just briefly say that we, as well, the Energy Association, we started um, working on community power, but well, it's now close to 15 years ago. Um, we had the first World Wind Energy Conference with that special theme in Canada in 2008. And um, if I'm right, our speaker from Canada, Andrea, um, she was there as well. We had another World Wind Conference with that special topic in 2012 in Bonn. Um, we are doing several um, series of events, um, smaller event and annual event, but this year, all is cancelled, of course, so we do this in this form. Um, we've started this new series of World Community Power Conferences, and I'm pleased that Jota from Japan is here, uh, one of our partners for the first World Community Power Conference, which took place in Fukushima three and a half years ago. Um, that in itself, of course, was an important um, signal. And the second one taking place two years later in Bamako, um, as you see, it would be this year again uh, to have the next one, but uh, we um, are now thinking of 2021, of course. Um, we are trying to put that topic, which is key as I presented, on the international agenda. And uh, for example, we have suggested, initiated a working group at the IRENA Coalition for Action so that the topic community energy is uh, dealt with there. There is a publication on broadening the ownership of renewables, which I think is important because of course IRENA is giving advice to its member states, to the governments. And then again, it can go back and help if uh, we provide the right input, help governments to set up the right frameworks. Um, let me briefly say uh, some words about German case. I know that we also have the, the German Community Power Alliance here with us, but we did a, a study on um, the, the German case, because many of you know, Germany changed from its successful feed-in tariff legislation, where there was a, a, a flourishing community power sector um, to auctions in 2017. And that is actually one uh, case where you see how you really can create problems for community power sector, because um, that really kind of slowed the development down in Germany. There is a big risk in this. Um, you see that the government, German government had three different uh, uh, goals. Um, one was they wanted to make sure there's not too much installed and too little installed of wind power. But uh, I think all of you know that the German market collapsed because of that. And that has a lot to do um, with the third point the, the diversity of actors was not preserved. In particular, community investors have, have big problems now to invest. Just one indicator is here that the creation of new energy cooperatives went down from 167 to only 14. An um, important point of that uh, is also that uh, the, the Germans are now paying more for the power from wind than before the old feed-in tariff. So that old community-based model actually was more um, efficient than it's now. So uh, one reason for that was that that definition in the German law was not clear enough because it did not support uh, community energy investors, but the wrong people because it was only focusing on uh, voting rights and not on actual shares. Um, that is uh, obvious that uh, if they had followed our proposals, then the situation might be different today because there were some privileges given to community projects, but they did not materialize because um, they were kind of misused by companies which were not community projects. So uh, let me just conclude here. What we need to discuss today, of course, is which policies are supportive and not discriminating 
smaller investors, community investors. We know that the feed-in tariff was a very good way. We know that this is under pressure. Um, so we need to really think about that. And I look forward to hearing the different uh, um, examples now from you, your experience from around the world. Um, with that, I conclude my presentation.